Now, this cult movement is what they call recognized scholarship. It is the cult of recognized scholarship. In order to become a cult member, you must change one word in the King James Bible. You must say, unfortunately, the King James translated it thus and so. Or you must say, a better rendering would be. Or you must say, the King James is not very accurate here. A better translation should be. The requirement to get into the cult is to alter the King James Bible. Once you've altered it, you're what we call a recognized scholar. And until you do alter it, you are not recognized as part of the clique. Now, this Alexandrian cult of egotistical uh, monkeys who go clear back to origin all have one great characteristic in common. They all think they're smart to correct, smart enough to correct the Word of God, and nobody is smart enough to correct them. They're very careful about their languages. Their language, Paul says, by good words and fair speeches, they deceive the hearts of the simple, because their God is their belly, according to Philippians chapter uh, 3 and Romans chapter 16. They're always very careful to talk about good godly men differed, and many godly men thought, and many good men supposed, and many good godly dedicated men worked hours to restore the original text, and many men who differed were good godly. That's how you spot what they call the Alexandrian cult. It is the largest cult in America, outside of the groups that are obvious cults, uh, the groups that followed Pastor Russell and Judd Rutherford and Mary Ellen White, and Mary Baker, Patterson, Eddy, and Joe Smith, obviously those are cults. But the largest cult outside of those cults is the cult of Alexandrian scholarship, which controls the faculties of every major Christian college and university in America. We are living in a lawless age when men are rebelling against authority in every department of life, religious, political, intellectual, and the body of Christ has rebelled against the authority of the authorized version. Whenever you speak about these matters, some of the Christian celebrities will say, well, Pete Ruckman thinks he's right and everybody else is wrong, or Dr. Ruckman thinks that him and a few like him. That's slander. There are a few like me, there are millions like me. As a matter of fact, there always have been 30 times as many people that believe the King James Bible was the Word of God than there were that didn't. There is no few to it. What these dirty rascals mean is the members of the cult don't believe it. What they mean is if you took the Alexandrian cult, the heretics who followed the Sinaiticus and Vatican manuscript, that most of them didn't believe it. When you say only Pete Ruckman and a few people believe the King James Bible Word of God, son, you cut off your head from your ears up. As a matter of fact, every soul that ever got saved in this country through the reading or teaching or preaching of the King James Bible believed it was the Word of God until somebody taught him otherwise. I wouldn't hazard a guess as to how many people there have lived since 1600 that believe the King James Bible was the Word of God, but if I was hazarding a guess, I would say 500 million would be a small estimate. 500 million in the last 300 years. Do you know how many scholars there were that didn't believe it? Well, certainly less than 50,000. So when somebody says, well, just a few people be like Pete Ruff, and they're just talking through their, their snozzle, brother, they don't know what they're talking about. Now, what has happened is that man, and when I say man, I mean, say, born-again, goodly, godly, dedicated, soul-winning, premillennial, fundamental apostates, have set themselves up as superior judges of the Word of God and changed it according to the dictates of human reason. That is, they've done exactly what the liberals have done. The only place they're not liberals is they profess to believe five or six things the liberals don't profess to believe. But outside of that, you may as well face it. The new ASV has made more changes in the text from the authorized version than any liberal ever has made in any book I've ever read. I have never read a work by any liberal in print that made 35,000 changes in the Bible text. And I've read a lot of liberals. You'll find 35,000 changes in the new ASV. This means that the modern fundamentalist is a liberal in his approach, a liberal in his attitude, and a liberal where it comes to matters of authority. In matters of profession, of course, he's a fundamentalist. By creation or by depravity, man has a natural craving to usurp authority, and he has a natural craving to usurp the authority of God. One must remember that uh, the first thing that Satan did was question what God said in Genesis 3, and before then he craved authority over God's throne in Isaiah 14, and said, I will ascend and put my throne above the stars of God. 
Then there's one issue that has existed long before the fundamentals ever showed up, and that was a matter of authority. And the next issue that showed up was what did the author or the authority say? People who think the issue today is new evangelicalism are making straw dummies and building clay castles in the sand. These people, these fundamentalists, these silly fundamentalists who get together at big congresses and say, we take our bold stand for the verbal, full, plenary inspiration, they're not kidding anybody themselves but themselves, some jackass in the field about 30 feet away from the school. The issue today has nothing to do with the fundamentals. The issue over the fundamentals was fought out more than 20 years ago. The issue today is authority. Authority in the home, authority in the school, authority in the government, authority in the church, and authority in the universe. And the people who are still worrying about neo-evangelicals and neo-orthodoxy are 50 years behind the times and don't know what they're doing or where they are or how to get there. Furthermore, they're not very sound Bible students. When the great apostasy began among the fundamentalists in 1920 and 1930, they ran from the liberals and modernists, people like Briggs of, of uh, Rochester, and they ran from these people, and they decided that it was the King James text was indefensible, and they couldn't handle the material in it. So they ran to the so-called original manuscripts, for, which were unheard of, unseen, untouched, unread, unfelt, unpreached, and unavailable, and then hid like little bunny rabbits from the big bad liberals. That is, the cowardly retreat of the defenders, the defenders of the faith was the worst cowardly retreat since the Battle of Bull Run. And when you hear about these men who were supposedly great defenders of the faith, nine out of ten of them were nothing but chicken-hearted cowards. And when the King James Bible was attacked, they ran for their lives and tucked their tails between their legs. Now, many people today admire the Bible as a wonderful book, but refuse to submit to its authority. And this is why people who always attack the King James Bible always begin by bragging about it. If you want to find a perfect attitude toward the King James Bible, pick up a piece of paper or writing or tape by any apostate fundamentalist and watch him begin this way. The King James Bible, I prefer. That's the cliche. When you hear a man say that, I prefer it, he's a member of what they call the cult. He's a cult member. Cult members never accept the King James Bible because it is the Word of God. They accept it because they prefer it. And they prefer it because if they quit preaching and teaching it, they lose their income and their congregation. Now, I think you could figure that out. They'll say, we prefer the King James Bible because of its well-known familiar phrases, its beautiful cadences, its poetic rhythm, and its beautiful Elizabethan English. That's the talk of a man who hates it and is not a submission to it and will correct it as quick as look at you. While well, the outstanding leaders of American fundamentalism in America today, who publishes a newspaper with a larger circulation in America, spent uh, 30 minutes eulogizing the King James Bible, and on an occasion turned to one of my friends and said to him, any man that would believe Revelation 22:14 as it's written in the King James Bible couldn't be a saved man. These men are their own gods. And maybe these Christian celebrities are their own authorities, and they've made gods out of their work, and they will not allow the Bible usurping their own place of authority, so they sit in judgment on it. The fact they're fundamentalists means absolutely nothing at all. I could care less if they were liberals. Even atheists will extol the Bible's literature, and even atheists will admit the Bible can outsell any five of its competitors. So what? Many Christians today acknowledge Jesus Christ as a supreme authority, but refuse to yield to the authority of the Scriptures. And this is a very hypocritical position. The outstanding case of this, of course, is the entire charismatic movement, which keeps talking about the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost, the Lord Jesus Christ and Jesus and the Holy Ghost, and yet they have no authority of the Bible, and the one that some of them have, they do not submit to. For example, there isn't a charismatic listening to my voice that doesn't read a baptism of the Holy Ghost into the tongues in 1 Corinthians 14, knowing perfectly well the word baptism doesn't occur anywhere in the chapter. You know what that is? That's perversion and rebellion against the authority of God Almighty. For example, there isn't a charismatic listening to my voice or a full gospel hobbly blobbly glibbly glubble that doesn't read that is. That's perversion and rebellion against the authority of God Almighty. For example, there isn't a charismatic list in my voice or a full gospel hobbly blobbly glibbly glubble that doesn't read unknown tongues back in Acts chapter 2. There are no unknown tongues in Acts chapter 2 from the first verse to the last verse. Now these are the people that are talking about Jesus, sweet Jesus, and hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to God, and let's just praise the Lord. 
They have no authority, and the authority God has placed before them, they have refused. 